Brothers and sisters, yesterday in the gospel, we heard about the amazing event in the life of Jesus, about the multiplication of the loaves. No doubt a prefigurement of the Eucharistic mystery, how, how the buy-in, the power of the mass, the bread and wine, uh, literally transformed into Christ. And so, as I said during the week, that we receive a person when we receive communion. When we approach the Eucharistic altar, we approach communion, that we are face to face with Jesus himself. And it's, and then in that moment, we should really take that time to adore the Lord and enter into this mystery where he's giving himself as a person to us in the depths of our soul. And his body will be with our body. And this is this, this union, this, this, this love between us and God. And so, you know, this whole passage about the, the, the feeding of the 5,000 and the other events in the other Gospels speaks to me of sacrifice. Every family has a trait, you know. Some families are really good at music. Some are good at, 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 at business. Some are good at science. Some are, uh, you know, doctors and uh, some are good at, uh, at being lawyers, some some are good at sports, you know. Uh, others are just good at um, uh, of their love for, for their poor. And, uh, you know, different families have different cultures as well. Uh, some sometimes successful, sometimes even broken. Um, the point is, what is our trait as a Christian family? What are we known for? What should we be known for? And it's sacrificial love. That's the heart of the gospel. That's, the, that's the, the symbol of Christianity is the Lord on the cross. Because it is, it is by the cross that we, we get to the glorious part of the promises of Christ. That it is that, that total gift of self. It's the, it's the sacrificial love that marks each one of us as Christians. In the gospel with the feeding 5,000 in John's gospel that we heard at Mass this Sunday, it speaks about, you know, first of all, the crowds. You know, the crowds are following Christ, whether they're just following him out of selfish motives because they want, uh, you know, uh, they, they've kind of maybe doing it for superficial reasons because they've seen miracles and they want to see more miracles. Maybe people there have, have fallen in love with him by seeing his compassion on others in an extraordinary way, a kind of compassion they probably never saw before, and they fell in love with his heart. Um, nevertheless, the crowds are following him, and they, have, they go up this mountain, and you know it takes sacrifice. That that we might quickly glance over that, but to follow Jesus involves sacrifice, it involves inconvenience, it involves maybe fatigue, tiredness. We know that they were hungry. Uh, from the scriptures because the Lord uh, ends up multiplying the bread to feed them. So already they, they've they left homes, they've left their, their routines, they've left uh, their lives to follow him. And, and that involved already the sacrifice. Now we can look at sacrifice from the side of the apostles because in, in one of the gospels, uh, in in Luke's gospel, for example, the, the Lord sees a crowd, he sees their hunger, and, and he says to the apostles, um, well, the apostles say, Lord, send them into the villages, you know, send them into the towns, let them go and buy food. It is a lonely place. No doubt the apostles are tired. They too are sacrificing a lot. They too, uh, uh, it's exhausting, this ministry of Christ, uh, of this constant gift of themselves and, 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 and of, of Christ himself to, to the crowds and to all of these thousands of people that are hearing about him and following him and so they say to christ um send them away you know send them away it's his temptation send them away and christ says no you feed them you give them something to eat amazing you give them something to eat and so a uh, there, in Luke's gospel, it says, we only have five loaves and two fish. We only have five loaves and two fish. In John's gospel, we hear that that actually came from a little boy who had the five loaves and two fish, who maybe was amongst the disciple group following Christ. And so, you know, it's this sacrifice, the very little that they had, they give to Christ. Christ takes it. 
So it's how Christ also demands even the very little that we have that we're holding on to. How he takes that and he transforms it into unthinkable, impossible blessing going out to all these thousands of people. All just amazing. And it's how God transforms our sacrifice and our pain in our life into a blessing. We can't even understand because it goes through his grace, goes through his power. And so, so this transforming miracle and, and let this awe and wonder of this miracle in the life of Jesus be a testimony to his divinity. How with five loaves and two fish, he could feed 5,000. And that's the miracle of the mass. How mere bread and wine is transformed into communion in an infinite way. It doesn't end and the blessing is infinite that each one of us gets to meet Christ personally in communion, face to face with him in the Eucharist. And so, brothers and sisters, um, I will post uh, another short testimony about this sacrifice. The Lord bless you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.